All right, so in this part of the video, I'm going to show you how I actually create a numbers document for my students to collaborate with in class. So first thing I do is I always choose a blank document. <clears throat> On the blank document, the first thing I do is usually delete the table because I don't necessarily use it in class unless students are signing up for a specific activity or a specific assignment or topic. <laughs> so the way that you delete this um table is click over here in the corner and then press delete on your keyboard all right the first sheet I usually uh, make my introduction or instructional sheet so <clears throat> you just type in the name over the top and then <laughs> in order to insert text you click your text box <clears throat> And a lot of times I'll just copy and paste from my actual lesson plan what I have. So I'll include my objective, I include my standards, and I may also include whatever the task is for that particular assignment. So what is it that I actually want them to finish or uh, do at the completion of the assignment? So after you uh, finish that, of course I need to make it a little bit larger. After I insert all that information, the next thing that I usually do is I create another sheet. Same thing, click over in the top left hand corner and delete. And then I'm going to start including um, items that I want the kids to look at. So let's say, for example, uh, we're in science, we're still talking about the periodic table. So I might take phosphorus and drop that in the screen. And I've already taken these screenshots, so they're sitting on my desktop. That's how I'm able to drag those over. <coughs> And then maybe some more elements. I don't know why it keeps popping up. All right, so then I'm just dropping in elements that the students can um, actually maybe match with the periodic table or uh, try to see if they can locate the match the picture with the periodic table whatever it is that your assignment is that you want them to do you have all of this space um, which is why I like numbers better than pages and even uh, keynote because the more stuff you add on the wider the space will become for you to put more information Sometimes if I have more instructions that I want them to have that are a little more specific, then I'll go ahead and add another, uh, either a text box or a shape box, and then I'll type out the instructions. So, like, for example, if I wanted them to match, maybe I'll put my instructions here, then I might say match the um, picture with the element on the table in the table I should say <clears throat> so then I have my instructions that are more specific and of course you can make it larger if you want to have it larger or you can place it anywhere <coughs> on the document so let's say for example I'm finished this is how I want my kids to see the assignment so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate you don't have to keep dropping in pictures once you've created your original sheet you're going to duplicate duplicate and duplicate. In my class, I have six groups, so most of the time I end up duplicating um, six sheets. And then, of course, you're going to rename those by clicking where it says Sheet. And as soon as it highlights it, then you're going to type in the group number. If you already have your class set up in groups or however you want to do it. <coughs> All right, so let's say, for example, I have four class periods of science. So instead of me having to recreate this document every single time, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and name this document. This will be Elements, oh. <laughs> Elements Practice. <clears throat> oh, Lord, okay. And um, after you've named it, then you just click back out. So you're going to go to File, and you're going to click Duplicate again. So then what it does is it creates a copy. Yay! So we don't have to create anymore. So once you've made your original, 
you've got is you can make as many copies as you need so that way like i said we're not re reinventing the wheel so then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start giving it the title of you know fourth period or period four or whatever however you want to label it and for some reason it goes back to copy so i just type it again and then it should say the second time <clears throat> so the next thing that you're going to do uh, once you've created your document and you want to share it to your students on Edmodo as an electronic link what you'll do is you'll click the little share symbol here share link via iCloud and then you'll click copy link also when you create your documents a lot of times when I don't want the kids to start working immediately I have it on view only <laughs> so that way they can't manipulate anything yet because I want to make sure that I give them explicit instructions so they'll know specifically what they're supposed to be doing what the objective is and, and whatnot so when you're ready for them to uh, interact then you'll just click allow editing so the next thing that you're going to do is click copy link then you'll click share spreadsheet and then you'll uh, when you go to Edmodo all you have to do is command V into the link attachment for the assignment so that way the kids can open up the electronic version of the document and they can get to work. So you'll click share spreadsheet. It'll say preparing to share. When it stops, you'll be able to copy and paste.